Now I'm doing this in Sublime text, which means that I don't actually have to go to the, the command line, but in Sublime I can just go Control B and it builds. So this is the idea behind a program, simply that you give it a bunch of instructions and then the computer interprets it. It says it goes through these lines one by one by one in order and it acts out whatever you tell it to. Now, what I want to do is, before I do anything else, I'm going to import some stuff. I'm going to import a library called numpy or numpy and I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot. The usefulness of that is then that numpy, uh, num numpy, whatever you want to call it, has a bunch of functions that are already written for you. I didn't have to worry about writing the code to generate it. What we will probably end up doing in this project is actually writing a library. We'll have a few Python files that then basically inter interact with each other. So let's actually get on with this stuff. Let's say that we are interested in the temperature of the whole planet on average. We'll start with like a global average and then we'll zoom in and do some like spatial stuff. Let's say that we define a variable and we're going to set it to be a numerical value, let's say 200. And now what else do we need to know if we wanted to work out how this is going to change over time? We need, we have the temperature, which we we're interested in changing over time. So let's write in our value of time step. So let's call that DT because I refuse to compromise on that. And that's going to be 60. I'm going to work here in standard um, units. So that's going to be 60 seconds um, in the same way that 200 here represents 200 Kelvin. So what else do we need to know? We need to know the energy coming in from the sun and the Stefan Boltzmann constant and this heat capacity. I'm going to do this considering one cubic meter of rock in the most generic sense. So I'm going to say this is 1E5. So then what that means is the insulation, which is the technical name for the energy that comes in from the sun, um, is the amount of energy that one square meter of the earth receives, which I just happen to know is 1370 joules per meter squared per second. So yes, 200 Kelvin is cold, Peregrine Toad, you're quite right. I find that it's a bit of a sanity check to start your model at different values and then see where it converges to because the behavior doesn't normally have like a bifurcation in it. Sigma is the magic constant and that's just a shorthand here, E negative eight, that's just short for 10 to the minus eight. So let's say then that um, we are gonna change the temperature of the planet, which if you look at what we've written here, this is the change in temperature. It means that I can just write this side of the equation. So we're multiplying by dt, we're then putting insulation, the incoming energy, minus the outgoing energy, sigma times t to the 4, uh, divided by heat capacity. We're going to print the value, which is going to be 200, we know that, and then we'll do that operation and we'll print it again. And so what you can see is it was originally 200 Kelvin. We then did a calculation based on this energy imbalance, and it slightly increased. That was over the course of one minute, the planet on average warmed by nearly a degree. Let's do that again, and we will do it a couple of times, and we'll just see what happens. So the output is increasing quite quickly, actually, considering this is every minute. Now, there's a instead of me having to copy and paste that over and over again, what we can do is put a loop in here. So what this will now do is, output an updated version of the temperature every half second. What we're seeing is the average temperature of the planet is increasing seemingly without any pause, you know, for thought. It's just going to carry on going. Now, a neat, a neat thing we should be able to do is actually graph that. So uh, you saw that I introduced the matplotlib pyplot library. So what I'm going to do is scatter y equals temperature, x equals t. What is t, I hear you ask? T is going to be zero to begin with. And then every time we uh, go through this loop, what I'm going to do is increase T by delta T. And so what, that's, what, what this is going to do is that's then saying that we're going to scatter a plot. So just literally do one single scatter point um, with this new temperature. But the X value is going to be the new value of T with the, with the delta T added onto it. And now, if we do this, oh, it's going to cycle through the colors, naturally. But what, we, what we're seeing is the temperature evolving over time. So here on the vertical axis, you've got the temperature. And on the x-axis, the horizontal axis, you've got time. And if you kind of tilt your head to the side, you can see it a bit better. You can see that the temperature isn't increasing uniformly. It is definitely curving. It is con 
vex. So it's sloping and going to be finding an equilibrium at, I would guess, maybe 370 Kelvin, maybe? Now, so what's interesting here is you might say, why is it not increasing by the same amount every time? Why is it caving off? And the reason for that is, as the temperature of the planet gets bigger, because, you know, there's an energy imbalance, so it's warming, it's also giving off more energy. And it's going to eventually reach this equilibrium where the amount of energy it throws out from sigma t to the 4 equals the insulation value. So you can see it's kind of flatlined here at this just shy of 400 Kelvin. Now you might say that's way too hot for the Earth. That's over 100 degrees Celsius. And yes, you're quite right. So let's make some improvements, shall we? Now, why did it end up being so hot? Inversion has got it. Only half the planet is radiated at a given time. It, we've basically assumed that the sun is directly overhead the entire time, which obviously isn't going to be the case. We basically need to account for night time. There has to be a diurnal cycle. There's two ways of doing that. You can either change the insulation so that it follows like a sine wave. The easy way to do it would be to change the geometry. The planet from the sun's perspective is a disk. It's literally a circle with a certain radius. And so the amount of insulation the whole planet receives is going to be pi, which is stored in the NumPy library times planet radius squared. Basically, if you imagine this ball of string is the Earth in space, right? Then the surface area of this thing is uh, four pi r squared, like just normal surface area of a sphere. But from the sun's perspective, from your perspective, if you imagine, well, actually, let's do it from this side, that is a circle. This, if you imagine that this is the side that the sun is seeing, the other side, this side, isn't getting any radiation. It isn't receiving any energy. So the Earth is effectively receiving the insulation over the surface area of a circle rather than a sphere. Because what that also accounts for is the fact that the higher latitudes receive less energy per square meter than the equator does. So the amount of energy that the Earth receives is the circle formed by the Earth from the sun's perspective, multiplied by the insulation. But the amount of energy that it radiates as a whole is the total surface area. So that is going to be four times pi times planet radius squared. There we go. So what we should see here is the temperature is going to equilibrate. It's going to find a new equilibrium at a much lower temperature than 100 degrees Celsius. From memory, the radiative temperature of the Earth in the absence of any atmosphere is about 255 Kelvin. Okay, so what you can see is that because we've now accounted for the day-night cycle, we actually are getting a much more realistic atmosphere. It is currently below freezing. Now, does anyone want to have a, a, a guess as to why this model is so cold? This is the global average temperature, which, as I said, is about 18 degrees. More than that, actually. More like 20 degrees too cold. Um, we haven't put an atmosphere in here. Um, this is this is the the basic greenhouse effect that a planet without an atmosphere has a way lower average temperature than a planet with an atmosphere in general. Now let's say that we change the planet's radius. What I'm also going to do is increase the t uh, the time step from one minute to ten minutes so that we just don't have to wait for as long. Um, let's say that the planet was one-tenth the size um, so yeah, the, the comparison between Earth and the Moon certainly isn't um, good because they're v very different in size. And now let's do it with a planet ten times the size. But yeah, the uh, the Moon has uh, the Moon gets to about 120 degrees Celsius in the sun in the sun in the day side, and on the night side it gets to about minus 200 Celsius, I think. So. The average temperature is way lower on the moon, but also the diurnal cycle, the, the day-night cycle, is way more pronounced. Okay, so that is the same. That's interesting. That shouldn't necessarily be the case. So it's 275 Kelvin, no matter the size. But the thing with the moon is you've it's got a slower rotation rate um, than the Earth. Uh, so there's an inexact comparison, but you can sort of see when you look at the moon that the average is less and the, di the day-night cycle is way bigger because there is no atmosphere. So let's let's model the atmosphere in here now.